Now we'll go through the water testing protocol. For this lab, I collected water from three sites to test. The first site, which we label in the protocol as site A, was the sunken garden at Georgian Court. The second site, which we label site B, is retention pond at Georgian Court by the athletic fields. And the third water sample, which we labeled sample C, is from the turtle tank in, um, in the classroom in Jeffries Hall, room 166. So the materials used for this lab are the three water samples, um, which I labeled A, the sunken garden, um, B was retention pond, and C was from the turtle tank. And I distributed those water samples into some smaller sterile tubes. Um, then we also had the TSA plates, which is this top row of plates here. Um, we'll also need the double strength red lactose Durham tubes, so that's this red broth over here. The EMB plates are these red plates, um, the second row here. Um, the Coloscan Easy Gel, that's in these bottles here. And then the Coloscan Empty Petri Dishes here. And then we also will need sterile swabs, um, micro pipetter, and 10 ml pipettes. For this water testing protocol, we are going to do an abbreviated version of the tests that were described in the lesson. So you're going to first label your TSA plate with your initials, the date, and the water sample letter. Remember, I assigned each water sample A, B, or C. Um, so then you would just dip a fresh swab into the water sample and using sterile te technique, carefully swab that onto the TSA plate. So remember that TSA is a, a general all-purpose medium. So that means it's not selecting um, for any specific type of bacteria. And we won't know from these plates really what it is that is growing, um, but we'll just have an idea that there are bacteria present. But this next test, the presumptive test, is actually testing for coliform bacteria. So for the presumptive test, you would label those red lactose broth tubes with your initials, the date, and the water sample letter. And then using a sterile pipette, you're going to add 10 milliliters of that sample water to the red um, lactose broth. So just loosen the cap on everything before you start. And taking 10 ml of the sample water from sample A and adding it to the broth that's labeled sample A. And then you would repeat that for all of the sample letters. So next we move on to the confirmed test, which is the EMB plates. Um, and those are also testing for coliforms but remember, they can be even a little bit more specific than the presumptive test in that they can distinguish between general coliforms and E. coli because E. coli um, grown on an EMB plate would get a greenish um, metallic looking sheen on the colonies. So for the presumptive, I'm sorry, for the confirmed test, you label your EMB plate and then take a fresh sterile swab and dip it into the water sample. And then streak that using sterile technique carefully onto the EMB plate. And finally, we move on to the Coliscan test, which remember is a, a separate test um, from the other ones. It's a, a, a modern um, method that's completely separate. And it can also distinguish between general coliforms and E. coli because general coliforms would appear pink and E. coli specifically would appear as blue colonies. Um, 
So it's a one-step method that lets us distinguish those and see if they're present in our water sample. So we would start by labeling the empty Petri dish, um, labeling it with the coliscan, or your name, and the water sample letter and the date. And make sure to leave it covered until you're ready to pour it so it stays sterile. And then um, you would gently invert the bottle of the coliscan gel to make sure it's not solid and make sure there's no clumps. So you do that by gently inverting it um, about three times, not vigorously shaking it because that would give you bubbles that would ruin the plate. So once you've made sure that your gel is not solid in the tube, um, then you're going to use a fresh sterile pipette to pipette one ml of your water sample into that bottle of the gel. And then tighten the cap and then invert it three times to really thoroughly mix your water sample with the gel. And then you pour that mixture into the empty Petri dish. And remember, keep the, the cover over it using the clamshell technique to keep everything sterile. And then you would leave that on the bench to solidify so you wouldn't move it for at least 20 minutes. Um, it needs some time for that gel to solidify. And finally, you would incubate all those samples at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours.